This is the first lesson in a series that's aim is to help you learn how to name chemical compounds and how to write chemical formulas. The first type of compound you're going to learn how to name are what are referred to as binary ionic compounds. Uh, just the name binary implies two. You know, like a bicycle has two wheels, uh, binoculars, there are two eyepieces you can look through. So the prefix bi means two. Uh, ionic implies that uh, ions are involved. So basically this is formed when you have two ions sticking together electromagnetically. They have two opposite charges. The cation is the first part. That's the positive ion formed by an atom losing electrons. And they're generally going to be metals. As you guys recall, metals are the elements that are found to the left of the stair step on the periodic table. Uh, the second portion is the anion, which is the negative ion formed by an atom gaining electrons. Generally, those are going to be the nonmetals. Those are the things found to the right of the stair step. When naming binary ionic compounds, it's important that you list the cation first, so the positive one goes first, or the metal. Uh, you name it as if it's just the pure element. You just give it the metallic name. There's no change. The anion, however, you name that second. Uh, the anion will consist of the element's root name. You'll drop its normal ending and add the suffix "-ide". And I'll show you some examples of this on the next slide. Here are some examples of some monatomic anions. Monatomic meaning one atom. Um, for example, notice here's chlorine with a one minus charge on it. This becomes chloride. Chloride. Oxygen, take the root name, drop the ending. O2 minus is referred to as oxide. Bromine with a one minus. You drop the ending and it becomes bromide. Sulfur with a 2 minus. You drop the ending, change it to ide. Sulfide. Okay, stop the video now and I want you to practice the other four, see what you come up with. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do the answers real quick for these four. Uh, bromine, once again, I just noticed it now, it's still bromide. Awesome. Uh, fluorine would become fluoride. You're familiar with fluoride. Dennis puts that on your teeth. Keep them healthy. Uh, iodine would become iodide. And then finally nitrogen would become nitride. So pretty simple. You just take the beginning of the element's name, drop the ending, add ide. Now we're going to practice just naming some simple binary ionic compounds. Uh, this first one, okay, the cation Na, as you know, sodium, so you name that just as if it's the element. And then notice the anion is chlorine, so that becomes chloride. Sodium chloride, that's table salt. And the next one, K, as you guys recall, potassium. And then I iodide. The third example on this page we have calcium and sulfur becomes sulfide. In this last example Li is lithium nitride. I know what some of you are thinking. You know that 3 is bothering you. You see that Li3n and Surely, you know, you must have to indicate that that 3 is there in some manner. However, that's not the case. Uh, the reason why is because lithium and nitrogen both have what are known as representative charges. There's only one way that these two elements combine, and they are in a 3 to 1 ratio. 3 lithiums to every 1 nitrogen. Uh, to, to mention that number 3 would be redundant, because that's the only way it can occur it doesn't have to be mentioned. And we'll get into instances where that number becomes significant in later examples. Okay, on this slide I have three 
examples I want you guys to try. Go ahead and pause the video at this time. See if you can name these three simple binary ionic compounds. And then when you come back, I'll answer. Okay, for the answers. This first one, all right, CS is cesium. And then bromine is still bromide. This next one, MG, magnesium. And then oxygen becomes oxide. And finally, the last example, you have aluminum. And chlorine becomes chloride. So as you can see, binary ionic compounds, not too bad. All right. Thank you.